What the heck is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. Of course, I'm one of your hosts, Snowbike Mike, and today I am joined by both of my gaming dads and one very special guest. You see him in the middle if you're watching or if you're listening. It's the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, joining the X-Cast today. Phil, we'll start with you. What up, homie? How are you? Huh. Um... Truth be told, it's uh, I've had easier couple of weeks, uh, but it'll be a good discussion today. I'm always happy to come on, talk to XCast. You guys do an amazing job talking to the community, keeping it real. So it's uh, it's an honor to be on with you guys. Thanks, Phil. Of course, you have been on a number of kind of funny content, but this is the first time you have joined us with the XCast here with the green team. So we appreciate your time and being here with me and my two gaming dads. Of course, I'll go around the room. Paris Lilly, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, and as you already said, thank you, Phil, for uh, coming on this episode. Greg Miller, instead of going on your show, finally he is on the actual Xbox show for Kind of Funny, so I'm very excited and appreciative of that. Looking forward to the conversation. Big deal. Gary Witta, you have a green juvie today. You're feeling the green. Yeah, this kiwi straw is not my favorite flavor, I don't think, but it was the only one you had in the fridge. You know, the price was right, so I grabbed one. <laughs> you love a free energy I'll, You know me, I'll, I don't care what it is, if it's free. I'm happy you're back, Gary. We have a really fun conversation and discussion to be had with you and the team. I see you got your book. Why don't you plug that book really quick? Fun oh, time. no, I, I didn't bring this into a plug. I just had a spare copy. I was going to give it to someone. But no, Gundog, uh, we actually had a, a small change in the publishing date. It comes out August 1st. You can pre-order it right now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere quality books are sold. I love that. Yeah. You're just bringing the book around now. I like that. You, you don't carry want to promote around. it. You just carry the book around. Yeah. All right. Good for you. I like that. Well, of course, this is the Kind of Funny X cast. We post each and every Thursday at 6 a.m. West Coast, Best Coast time on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, podcast services around the globe, and of course on roosterteeth.com. Don't forget, we are now Epic Games partners, which means you can support the team in a brand new way. If you're buying games off the Epic Games store, if you're upgrading your look in Fortnite, Rocket League, or Fall Guys, don't forget to use our Epic Creator Code kind of funny at checkout and of course we love to shout out those who support us over on patreon to help keep the lights on here in the spare bedroom if you're over on patreon thank you for of course watching live with multiple multiple of our shows we're not doing this episode live but thank you for your support and thank you to our patreon producers for the month of may delaney twining thank you for your support this week the kind of funny x cast is sponsored by honey and rocket money but myself and the team will tell you all about that in just a little bit Let's get to the show. We get to hang out with Phil Spencer. It's going to be a fun time together. Phil, let's just jump right into it. And it's a tough way to start this episode. It's my birthday this week, and I didn't want to have to do it like this. But, Phil, it's been a tough week in the Xbox universe. As you know, of course, the CMA kind of blocking our acquisition of Activision Blizzard King and Redfall coming out to poor reviews at the launch. Let's start off at the top. Phil? Phil? Let's talk about the CMA and, of course, this Activision Blizzard acquisition. How are you feeling about this? What should be the overall mindset for Xbox gamers when we look at this after months and months of conversation? Yeah, we, you know, we remain confident. Um, obviously, the news from the CMA, which for those not tracking all this, is the United Kingdom's uh, regulatory board on acquisitions to block the acquisition. We'll be appealing that. Uh, that's our plan. We continue to work with the European Union. We'll continue to work with the FTC. I think there are like 14 jurisdictions all up. We're working on approval. I think we have nine approvals so far. Um, but the CMA decision was disappointing. Uh, I've been talking to that group for coming up on a year. Uh, I They've defined a market of, of cloud gaming that, in my mind, doesn't really exist yet today. Uh, but they have a point of view that maybe we have a lead in a market that is just forming and that this content could somehow prohibit others from competing in that market. But we'll appeal. Uh, we stay on it. The company remains very, very committed. Uh, we think Activision, Activision Blizzard King is not our strategy, <clears throat> but it is an accelerant for our strategy. So we're, uh, we're still heads down and working through regulatory. I am pleased to hear that, of course, as a big fan of many of those gaming franchises over there. I'm looking forward to seeing this deal go through, and I'm glad to hear that you and the team are still hard at work at making this happen. And it's been a long road. It's been a tough road to talk about it each and every single week, kind of falling apart. But uh, I'm It's happy always the to hear. Brits, isn't it, Mike? It's, we're always yeah. flying the ointment. <laughs> God, we, go we, gotta, there, we just got to rain on everyone's go parade. It's a tough one, Gary. Of course, we got to move on 
to the next one. Phil, of course, Redfall has released from Arcane Austin, and uh, it's been a tough release week for that, coming out to low reviews and a lot of disappointment from many fans. Can you talk about that? What is your thoughts right now as we head into the first week of this game being out? Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll start, not, I'll, I'll hit, I'll hit Redfall, but I'll just say all up, um, you know, there's, there's nothing that's more difficult for me than disappointing the Xbox community. Um, I've been a part of it for a long time. I obviously work on Xbox, head of the business, have a lot of friends, get a lot of feedback. Um, and just to kind of watch the community lose confidence, be disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I'm upset with myself. Uh, I, I kind of make it, revisit our process. You know, I think back to the announcement of 60 frames per second, and then we weren't shipping 60 frames per second. That was kind of our punch in the chin, rightfully, uh, a couple weeks ago. And then seeing the game come out and the critical response was not what we wanted. Um, and it's, it's, it's disappointing. Um, and so kind of pick myself up. Uh, what can we learn? How can we get better? Uh, I, one thing I'll fight is kind of uh, what went wrong. There's clearly quality and execution things that we can do. But one thing I won't do is push against creative aspirations of our teams. Then a lot of people will say, hey, you've got teams. Teams know how to do one kind of game. Just force them to go do the one kind of game that they have a proven track record for. Um, and I'm just not a believer in that. Maybe that means I'll, I'll under deliver for some of our fans out there. But when a team like Rare wants to do Sea of Thieves, when a team like Obsidian wants to do Grounded, when Tango wants to go do Hi-Fi, when everybody probably thought they were doing Evil the Within 3, um, I want to give the teams the creative platform to go and push their ability, push their aspirations. Um, but I also need to have a, a great selection of games that are continue to come that surprise and delight our fans. And we under delivered on that. And for that, I apologize. It's um, not not what I expect, not what I want. Um, but, you know, it's ours to deliver. So following up on that, Phil, so again, I appreciate the transparency on that, but there, there is a second component to this. And as you may or may not know, I, I talk to a lot of people in the Xbox community because I want to understand, you know, what people are excited about, what they're frustrated about, things like that. So kind of sticking on this conversation about Redfall, but it's kind of a bigger general question as well. And I kind of want to read directly from this so I make sure I, I get it crystal clear. So what goes into the decision to delay a game when when you launch it feature incomplete or there's a bunch of technical issues obviously the re we've seen recent examples around the industry redfall and hail infinite are two that stick out in my mind for xbox you know we obviously have seen the review scores clearly you know we've we've had the opinion that the game should be delayed we know every developer wants to ship the best game that they possibly can but from your level, you know, what's the balance there on when to ship a game that may be feature incomplete or have some technical issues or just simply give it more time and delay it? Well, I, I think those are, and I'm happy to go very deep on this. I think if I think about a team's execution on a game, there's, we had a creative vision and did we realize that vision through the game that we created? That's not a delay question if the answer is no. Like you can't take something that, that you started on. This isn't a Redfall specific conversation, right. but we will build games that review in the high 80s and we will, review, we will build games that review in the 60s. I mean, it's just kind of part of being in game publishing. And if, if you're afraid of that, then you shouldn't be in the entertainment business. You shouldn't be in the games business. That said, every time we deliver something below our own internal expectations that surprises us, um, we should check our process. I don't look at the review scores on Redfall and I don't, I, there, there are quality issues and we're working on those. Um, but I think there's a, a fundamental piece of feedback that we get that the game isn't realizing the creative vision that it had for its players. That doesn't feel like a, hey, just delay it. 
that feels like the game had a goal to do one thing. And when players are actually playing, they're not feeling that thing. They're not feeling the, the creative execution of the team. Um, when a game needs to be delayed, what we did with Halo, we did with Starfield, we did with Redfall, because the production timeline is saying we have this vision and our production timelines don't get us to the completion of that vision. Uh, we're, we do delay games. We do that. Um, learning about the quality, there are clearly, I've seen them. I know there are bugs in Redfall that's launching. But when I look at like the crash rates on the game, because we get all the telemetry of everything that's happened, it's it's not out of proportion for a game that has, has just launched. It's, it's kind of in the pocket of what we would expect. That's not to de deny any of the animation, streaming of texture bugs, the AI bugs that we've seen. We will go work on those. But when I look at the review scores of this game, it's, did we did we have enough of creative differentiation in our core idea um, and did we realize that creative ambition i'm a huge supporter of arcane austin their track record is awesome i love a lot of the great games that they've built this is one where the team didn't hit their own internal goals when it launched i think it's maybe a little simplistic to just say hey if you would have just delayed it three months the core creative of the game would have delivered on something that was different than what it was. Um, so I look at them at different camps. If there's a production timeline issue, we've been open to delaying. If we just have more bugs than we should have at the end of a game, we're, we, we're open to delaying. Um, at some point, we have to have a creative vision and put the game out and creator, our reviewers and players will tell us what they think. Can I jump in? Yeah, of course, well, please, Gary. So I have a just a couple of small observations and then 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 a question first of all i want to give phil props for coming on here today props, and, and talk just for a minute about about why why i admire phil because he and i have been here before back <laughs> in 2020 during the pandemic when i was doing animal talking phil you'll remember this phil yeah. was booked to come on my dumb animal crossing talk show <laughs> and then after he was booked the news came that halo was going to be halo infinite was going to be delayed and would not ship with the xbox series x and s and it was a, you'll remember, it was a big deal. There was a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth and people rending their garments. And I was fully prepared for the other shoe to drop. I was waiting for a call from Xbox PR from Jeff, you know, your friend of mine, Jeff, over in Xbox PR to say, Phil's not going to be able to come on the show live because, you know, it's a big mess right now. We don't want to put him in the firing line for that. And Jeff called and I thought, here, here it is. Here comes the other shoe. And he was like, Phil just wants to know, like, when's the tech rehearsal? Like, it's, oh, it's going ahead. And he came on on a live talk show and took a bunch of tough questions on a really tough subject and took it on the chin. And I will always, I've always admired him for that, for not, it would have been very easy for him to pull out and he didn't. He came on and, he, and, he, and he's doing it again now. And I, and I salute Phil for that. The other point I want to make is that every time, there may be some Sony warrior, platform warriors out there right now crowing about the fact that Redfall has, has underperformed. I just want to point this out as a creative. Every time somebody takes a big bet, especially a big AAA bet, on an original idea, a new IP, and it fails, everybody suffers. It's bad yep. for everybody because it makes it that much harder for the for the for the Phils and the Jim Ryan's of the world, the create the, the the big, you know, the creative, the decision makers to to take a chance on them. Oh, but the last time we did that, it didn't work. Like, let, maybe let's just make a sequel to the next thing, or let the algorithm tell us what to do. So every time somebody takes a risk on something new, and especially if it involves something different in game design, let's try something that has been done for it. It doesn't work. It hurts everybody. So I just want everyone to be clear, this sucks for everybody. And it's, I see it in my business, I see it in Hollywood, I see it in film and television. It's why so much content is so generic and derivative and formulaic because everyone's afraid to take a risk. And when something new succeeds, it's good for everyone. When something new and, and original fails, it's bad for everyone. So I just want to acknowledge that this is like a big shit sandwich and we all have to take a bite, including the Sony people, including everybody. Specifically with the, sorry, this is a long time. Specifically with a question for Phil, I want to talk specifically about Redfall. When you say that you're disappointed in the reaction, that to me suggests that the reaction was something different than what you were expecting, what you were hoping for. But I know that when you, these big AAA games, they get subjected to all kinds of internal testing. Focus groups come in. There are third-party companies that will come in and even write like mock reviews or come to like hit detection out of the law. Tell you, here's what you can expect the press to make of your game. So usually you've got a sense of what the game is going to, how it's going to be received before it's released, so you can be prepared for it. So Phil, when you say you're disappointed, does that mean that you thought the game was gonna be better received or did, did it, was it in line with XXA? Were you, how surprised were you by the reaction or how like internally, how much do you know, I don't know, I feel like this one, people like, I, we know the game 
it, it, is, it has problems. Like, to what extent was, was this different from what you expected? And also, and, and sorry, I know I've been talking a long time. And uh, as a, the second part of that is, when a game is released now, it's not like the old days when a, when a, when a cartridge was shipped in a box and the release, the release of the game was the end of the, the game's like, development cycle. Now it's just a, the, the, the 1.0 release is just a point on the roadmap. To what extent, given that what we're talking about here is not just 30 frames, but design issues, things that may be more conceptual, to what extent do you think, or, or are you committed to continuing to work on the game and getting it and getting it maybe a year down the road, you know, Cyberpunk, No Man's Sky, we've seen these redemptive stories in the past. To what extent do you hold out hope that you can still get the game closer to where you wanted it to be at launch? I know that was a lot. No, it's, <laughs> well, I, at first I thought your words about creative ambition of teams, you especially, I mean, you, you, you've lived this, you've done this, um, are very well said and, and, and very, spot on so thank you for that and that's why i love your voice in this community because you you've created um you've seen you've seen kind of ups and as anybody in the industry we've all seen downs and um on the score yeah we do mock reviews for every game that we we launch and this is like double digits lower than we thought we would be um with this game went through our mock reviews uh, and that's what's m one of the disappointing things. Like we, we would never strive to launch a game that we thought was going to review in the low 60s. It's, it's not part of our goals. If, if you look at our review scores over the last year, it's not a defense at all. Um, if you look at the review scores over the last year, um, I think the teams have done a much a better job in upping the level of quality of the games that we've shipped. Some of those games first shipped on PlayStation, but still, when I go through the list of the games, you still have to build a game, you still have to ship a game. Um, and this game was significantly below our internal metrics in terms of where it actually reviewed. But that's not on anybody but us. Like, we have to own that. In terms of our commitment to the game, absolutely. The team at Arcane is on taking the near-term feedback. We're, we're still working on the 60 frames per second. Uh, we have a good timeline for that. We, we're, we're committed to getting that done. And we're going to continue to to work the game. I think we've we've shown a commitment to games like Sea of Thieves and and like Grounded to continue to go and build games. But I also know that these games are seventy dollars, and I'm not gonna like I'm I'm gonna take full responsibility for launching a game that needs to be great. You know, I think what I have with the Xbox community, what we have, what I am a part of. Um, is a team there's still questions that pop every so often of how committed is the company to this category when are we just going to push xbox out of the market um, there's a lot of twitter firing of phil right now which is fine I'm, I'm way overpaid for the role i have anyway so like i get that's my responsibility um, but we will remain committed to the game and the players um, as long as the players want to go play games uh, and uh, that's my commitment to the community. Um, I'm kind of at a low point right now in terms of my delivery on that commitment to the community, uh, but it, it very much stays. I want to support the team. And I want to support the creative ambitions of the teams, and I want to support the players. And uh, we let a lot of people down this week with the launch of the game, um, but we will we will continue to strive on. You have to, right? That's just that's what creative is about. No, you, you absolutely do. And and to kind of start transitioning this into hopefully more happy news, but I, I do want to address uh, something, you know, around that. Obviously, today you announced the uh, Xbox Game Showcase, which will be happening this June. And obviously, there's going to be a lot of new reveals and surprises that come out of that, which is great. But I am going to bring it back again to another common theme that I do hear through the community. And I've actually said to, said this to you in the past, but it's about communication coming from Xbox. I do feel back in 2021, you did a fantastic job with communication, which arguably has been the best year during this current generation of Xbox. Obviously we know that 2022 was a light year for Xbox yeah. as far as releasing titles. Now, last year during the showcase, you had the 12 month plan. You didn't necessarily deliver on all the games coming. No, we didn't no deliver. Not no necessarily, like, we didn't deliver. Yeah, absolutely. So my, my point of bringing that up is this, you know, talking about some of the lessons learned that come out of that. And, and obviously even with not every game making the 12 months, going back to, again, you know, game development, things happen, things aren't always going to come on time. But as we go into this showcase, one of the common themes that I hear is I don't know enough about things that you've announced in the past, like even yep. more specifically going back to 2020. And I'll just run down a quick list of it. Vowed. Perfect Dark, Everwild, which is something we really don't know that much about. Fable, State of Decay 3, Contraband. Obviously, we've seen a little more in Hellblade 2. 
You know, we have studios like In Exile and Compulsion Games that we know are working on things, but we haven't seen any real updates on that. So I titled all my questions balance and communication, because even in this, it's like, what is that balance on when when you show something that you know is going to be years down the road and kind of that cadence of providing updates along the way. And obviously as we go into the showcase, not that you need to reveal anything specific here, but what were some of those lessons learned from last year's showcase that you'll bring into this one? Yeah. And you might try to get me on positive. I'm not in positive mode this week, so I'll apologize for staying in kind of cranky mode, but um, in terms of lessons learned, and I'll, I'll even go back to the Redfall videos on IGN of showing videos of the game running at 60 on PC um, at the point knowing that the game was going to run 30 frames per second at launch on console. Like we have to be transparent about what we're showing, that what we're showing is representative of what our console customer, our most committed customer to our brand, financially committed, what they're going to see, what they're going to play. And that transparency just has to get better. Um, and I'm not pointing at anybody but myself, right? When, and, and you know, I, I guess that at some point I will have enough knocks against me that it, it's somebody else here. Um, but, you know, that I think it's transparency in what we're building, what our aspiration is for the game, what it's going to look like, what the features are. And it drives me crazy when we self-inflicted wounds of kind of putting things out there of communication that's confusing or misleading about what the actual end product is going to be. So you can try to take me to positive space. I'm just not in that headspace right now. That said, when I go and I look at showcase and I'm not going to try to oversell showcase here because I, if, if I were on the other side of, of watching this, it's like, Hey, after Redfall, I'm going to put my hands on the controller and that's, what's going to take to kind of prove to me, but that's not what showcase is. So, um, <laughs> I'm very enthusiastic about Showcase. I'm, I, I, we're going to announce some things that people haven't seen, some new games. We're going to give updates to some of the things that were on your list. Um, the other thing that gets me really excited is when I look forward over the next quarters, which has always been my focus of how do we get a big game out every quarter at quality, um, that yeah. things are lining up finally after some of the slowdown through COVID. I'm tired of talking about that. Um, but I can now see that we've got games coming every quarter that I think will surprise and delight um, our customers. We still have to deliver on the creative. We still have to deliver on the technical. Not every game we ship is for everybody. We know that. Like, I don't want to build. I'm not trying to build the, the, the one game to rule them all. We will have different creative takes and different. And we have a very diverse portfolio when you think about the stuff that Microsoft Game Studios builds. Uh, but I like that. I think for what we're trying to do as Xbox, which isn't to mimic any of the other platforms out there, it's create our own brand and identity. Um, the diversity of what we build uh, hopefully will end up being being a strength. But we have to do it at quality. We have to do it at time on time. And we have to show people what they're actually going to see. We have yes. to show gameplay. And I think I'm kind of beyond that. Like we've got to put great games in the hands of our players. There's there's nothing else. If I could follow up on that, and, and I apologize, I do not want to dominate the conversation, but I, I make sure I want to follow up on the point of everything that you just said. And, and I'll take it from a personal standpoint. I've been a big believer in what Xbox has been building since about 2016, right? Xbox Play Anywhere, Game Pass, what you're doing with the Series X and S, just the cloud initiative, everything. I love all the services and the, and the marketing message that you present to the community. But to your point, and for, for me personally, I have Game Pass, my kids play it, we all love it. But you, like you even mentioned, delivering quality experiences every quarter, things like that. That's the sentiment that we get from the community right now. That's the sentiment that I even have of, it's great to talk about these things. I think we've been talking about them ad nauseum. It's like, when are we gonna get to that point of actually delivering these experiences? Like we, I just ran down those games, there's 20 something studios, forget Activision. Xbox Game Studios, what it is today. There's more than enough studios and titles out there that we're all anticipating. And I think that is the, the common frustration that I see out there from people that it's like, we're tired of hearing, wait till next year. And I know I, you know that, but I know. It's like, I know. Yeah. And yeah. Um, this year started out well. 
Yeah, I yes, thought developer did. direct was received well. The team did a really good job. I thought with the messaging around set to your point around setting expectation, and I will even say yes, I'm in, um, uh, I'm rooting for the home team here, but I'll say over delivering on expectations of that show versus what it was. I think the drop of hi fi to say hey, if you've if you've got Game Pass, you don't even have to buy the game. Like just go click. People loved hi fi. Something we don't talk a lot about that same month, Age Two on console shipped. Truth be told, more people are playing age, a bunch of people are playing Hi-Fi and Age 2, but Age 2 actually has more players right now. But all the fanfare goes to the highly rated kind of new Hi-Fi, get that. Um, I know the review scores on Minecraft Legends, Minecraft I think always reviews somewhere kind of different than the top. But if I look at the reaction, I think we've already had over 3 million people playing. Yeah, I saw like it's launch week. It was the number one retail game on the Switch in Japan, which isn't always where Microsoft sits um, in terms of sales. So I, you know, I, I feel like momentum is building and then something like Redfall happens and Xbox, the Xbox community should demand a, a lot from us as a team where we sit inside of Microsoft. We've got the resources to do better. Um, 2022 was, as you said, a very light year, I think is what you said. I, I might have other words for it. Um, and then 2023, we started well, and, and this was a knockback. And, but it's our job to go and deliver on the next games. I can only look forward, right? I can sit here and wallow in, in, in my own frustration um but all i can do is say i'm going to do better tomorrow than i did yesterday um and continue to support the teams and and continue to grow um but yeah i think it is ours to prove that i can say now and everybody can already stop i don't want to hear what phil has to say about the future and i i kind of fully respect that point of view um that we've got We've got Starfield coming. We've got Forza coming. We've got Hellblade coming. Like we've got collections of games. I'm seeing very good builds of Avowed and stuff. Like uh, we're in. Like I can see it. Um, but until I, you have a controller in your hand and you're smiling from playing our games, none of my words should matter. Shout out to Honey for sponsoring this episode. Honey is the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. And we all know there's nothing better than the feeling of saving money. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as the Honey guy dances it searches for coupons it can find for the site. And if it finds a working coupon, you will watch the prices drop. We here at Kind of Funny have been using Honey for years, and it has literally saved us thousands on tech, costumes, food, you name it. Honestly, I just love how easy it is to set, forget, and save. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It also works on your iPhone. You just activate it on Safari on your phone, save on the go. And if you don't already have Honey, you can be straight up missing out. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. You can get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny. That's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny. Shout out to Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode. We all love gobbling up content and we have an understanding of what subscriptions we use. Or do we? Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to $200. That's right, you, you. You out there, you could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you don't even know about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps you lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money has saved some of us here at Kind of Funny a ton of money and it can help you too. Stop throwing away your money, cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way. By going to rocketmoney.com slash kinda funny. That's rocketmoney.com slash kinda funny. R O C K E T M O N E Y dot com slash kinda funny. Paris was just talking about what have you learned? And I want to go back to that in the case of Redfall, even as just a case study for things like this when they happen in general. Because Redfall wasn't even the first the only game to stumble out of the gate this week. Look at the PC version of Jedi Survivor. What a mess unacceptable that that game shipped in the state that it was. And they must have known. It was, oh, geez, the game has bugs. No, you knew. 
and you shipped it anyway. So EA Respawn, for example, even on a massive title like that, it's going to be a game of the year contender. We all know that. But like the PC versions was unacceptable. My understanding is the PlayStation version is a bit of a mess as well. So these, we're still seeing this stuff happening on the regular. I, just in general, when things... I'm fascinated, as you might know, I'm fascinated by the subject of failure because I've experienced a lot of it in my own career and in, and in my personal life as well. And I think about it a lot. The number one quote that I, that I stole from a person much smarter than me, I talk about it all the time when I talk about writing at creative seminars and things like that, is failure is not the opposite of success, it's a part of it. But that's only true if you can get past feeling sorry for yourself when something fails and sift through the rubble and start figuring out, well, what can we learn? What can we learn from this failure? What can we take from this? What is teachable? And so I wanted to ask Phil, both in general and in the case of Redfall, I know you said you're gonna work in towards kind of turning the game around, but like, do you have a formal process and what does it look like in the case of Redfall when something doesn't meet expectations? What is, is it something you get into right away or do you wait for the dust to settle? What is the post-mortem process? What is the what went wrong and how do we prevent this from happening again process look like at Xbox? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. And I think I love your quote, Gary. I might lift that from you. Um, people don't have to care about this, but I'll talk about it. When we acquire studios, there's, there's, kind of, there's games that are in development when we acquire a studio. And then there's things that are either really early in development or not even conceived yet. Uh, and I think we need to improve on engaging in games that are midway through production when they become part of Xbox. I do think there's a different expectation for a game and even a team when you've been third party and all of a sudden you become part of first party. There's a different expectation in terms of how you're going to perform on our console. I think there's a different competitive set when people look at what this game is and the other games that they're going to say, hey, I want this game to feel as competitive as this other game on another uh, console platform in our case. And we didn't do a good job early on in engaging with Arcane Austin to really help them understand what it meant to be part of Xbox and part of first party and use some of our internal resources uh, to, to help them and, and kind of move along that journey even faster. So we kind of left them to go work on the game. They're a very talented team. I love that team and I still do. And I will totally bet on them to do another great game. Um, but when I, like Matt Booty and Jamie Leader who's running ZeniMax and I sit down, I think we can engage earlier uh, with our different studios. And I do think there's a difference when we come in when the creative's already set on a game that's not washing our hands of any of the creative. Every game we ship from our teams is an Xbox game. Um, and so it's a full responsibility for it. Uh, but thinking about how our internal processes of dev assistance, um, even some of our internal ATG resources, what's the advanced technology group and how those work with our internal teams. I think we can do a better job with our in, internal team. We did a better job with Starfield. Again, nobody should believe it until they're playing the game. But that game was earlier on in production. Um, and it was easier for us to kind of swarm a bunch of people to go and kind of help with some of the technology on our platform and in, in ensure that we're going to ship a, a quality experience there. And we should have been there for Harvey and the team earlier. I, I think that's on, on us. And then through the process, you know, it's an Unreal game. We have a bunch of studios that have done some really great work on Unreal over the years. And I think we were too late to, to help in that when they had certain issues that they were working through, which any team will, it's nothing to do with the specific engine. Um, but we have a lot of experience and we, we needed to get on that earlier with the team. Um, and we didn't do that. And there's, that's not an excuse. And you asked just to kind of diagnose. So when the 60 frames per second issue came up, um, we were definitely diving in. We had people from the coalition and people from Rare and stuff looking, both teams that have done some really great work with Unreal to help us build a 60 FPS plan. But obviously that was a plan that had to be in place last fall um, in order for us to really be in a position to, to have it at launch. And I, I take that as learning, as painful as it is. But as you said, you know, it's, it, it's part of getting to success it, are those learnings and that diagnosis. There's a bunch of other stuff I could go into, but uh, then we end up with kind of dev doc, which I'm happy to do, but um, that, yeah. Well, Phil, we don't have much time with you, so I'm going to go around the table, give everybody one final question for Phil. I'm going to rattle off a couple quick ones with you, Phil. Of course, we talk about 60 frames, 30 frames. Should Xbox players expect a clear message this summer with Starfield with 30 and 60 frames? That's a big lesson learned, as you brought up. Should we expect that answer as clear as day? Yeah. 
Okay, that's a great one. Uh, another one, uh, you see a lot of conversation, of course. I want to praise you and the team for really elevating the PC side of this Xbox ecosystem. I think we've seen a lot of great strides in that. But when you see the community talk about the console side of things, do you think you've lost the focus or maybe put too much onto the PC side? Do you think that the console is still getting the console love that it deserves, whether it be the homepage update, achievements, of course, looking forward and using the power of this next gen? Do you think you guys have lost that focus or is it still there? And can we see more love on that side? Well, we'll definitely continue to focus on on making our console experience as, as great as it can be. I like the the homepage refresh and some stuff. I will say this might be disruptive as well. Um, we have a different vision. You know, Paris talked about this. It's play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. We want Xbox to be something that people who buy our console can feel like they're a member of, obviously, who are playing on PC, who are playing on cloud, that they feel like, feel like they're full members um, of our ecosystem. Game Pass players can play um, on many different devices, and, and we remain fully committed to that. Um, we're not in the business of out-consoling Sony or out-consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, a very, very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team that's on us, not on anybody else. Our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform, but we are not in a position. And I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people, like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems and their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen. When you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft, like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. Um, so what we have to do, and we have this unique vision because we see what creators want to do. Creators want to build games that can meet players on any screen. People play with their friends regardless of what other screen they're on. And the console is the core of the Xbox brand. There's no doubt. So so like we will stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. But I know some people want to hold us up of just being a better green version of what the blue guys do. Um, and I'm just going to say, like, there's not a win for Xbox in staying in the wake of somebody else. We have to go off and do our own thing with Game Bass, with the stuff we do with xCloud and the way we build our games. Sorry, I was a little long-winded. No, that was perfect. No. And unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Phil. I know that we have a hard out here, but... I want to end it with something positive, Phil, because I've gotten cranky, Phil, this whole episode, and I freaking love you, and I appreciate you being on and being hard with us, but I do need something positive out of you, Phil. So before you leave, tell me and the Xbox community something positive that you're looking forward to, that you're playing, anything fun to bring a smile to your face. <laughs> Dude, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. Like, you know, I... I will always see, I'll use this for you, the gap between the trees. I'll always see the fresh pal. Like, this is why I'm here. Um, I love the games that are ahead of us. I'm having a great time. 
playing the games that are available in Game Pass today. I look in Ravenlock coming, Benedict's here. Um, like I, I just love playing video games. One of the things I am excited about um, is the ROG Ally, something I've got my hands on if people have had a chance to play with that. And I just love the fact that here's another device that people are going to get to go experience great games on, whether it's your Steam Deck or that or your Xbox. You know, I see the growth in video games. I get to spend time with creators who are excited about the opportunity that they have. I get to go play some amazing games. Some of those are Game Pass, some of those not. Um, and I just think this, this, the gaming space has never been more diversely creative than it is right now. And it's uh, a privilege to be a part of it. I love hearing that. Paris, end us with this episode. What do you got to say? And let's get out of here. Yeah, just just a quick statement as we get out of here. First and foremost, Phil, thank you for doing this. This is clearly not the conversation we thought we were going to have when we scheduled this, but we do appreciate your candor and and just being it being 100% honest about the current state of what's going on with Xbox. Um, I am hopeful in the future we can have more conversations about what ID at Xbox is doing in their initiatives, Game Camp New Orleans, things like that, that are more positive and enabling more creators, because that's what I really wanted to talk about in this episode. But as we go into June, I am looking forward to the showcase. I am looking forward to the reveals that are coming. And you know, I, I, I still think the future is bright for Xbox and Xbox Game Studios and what you'll have to present. This is a bump in the road, but uh, I still think the future is going to be bright. So, again, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, Paris. All right. Well, on behalf of my two gaming dads, thank you, Phil Spencer, for joining us on this week's Kind of Funny X-Cast. Of course, thank you all for tuning in and hanging out with us. We will see you next week. And Team Xbox will see you in June for the big Xbox Game Showcase and, of course, that deep dive into Starfield. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you back next week. <laughs>